Hello vinyl community. I have not done this for a while, but uh, I thought maybe it's time to make another video about my records. And um, you know how it is. With a VC video you have to feel it. If you don't feel it, then it becomes a chore. And honestly, I have uh, far too many other real chores on my hands, so um, I certainly don't want the creation of these videos to deteriorate in this direction. This is a difficult word for me to pronounce. Deteriorate. 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 Whew. Be it as it may, my ability to speak English really benefits from making VC videos. I almost feel like I'm abusing the VC community <laughs> for my own English exercise. However, let's talk about music. Um, so I have a, quite a lot of uh, records here right now and um, my uh, playlist of the last three or four weeks was actually quite jazzy. So uh, certainly there will be a lot of uh, jazzy or kind of fusion oriented uh, records uh, in my stack. And uh, I start with this one because I keep coming back to it. This is Mr. Gone by Weather Report and uh, this is quite a fascinating record, I must say. Um, so this is uh, one of those albums, I think this came out in 1978 uh, when uh, Jaco Pastorius was already kind of firmly established as a member of the band he, and he also co-produces uh, this record, this album. And uh, I would say from all the Weather Report uh, albums that include Jaco Pastorius, this is probably the one with his largest involvement. So it's a wonderful record, super fascinating. I've researched this album a little bit just to find out more about it. And uh, it's actually a, an album that has been pretty much uh, panned by the critics back in the day, which certainly led to some tension between Joe Zavinul, Jaco Pastorius and the music press. But uh, yeah, that's all forgotten because uh, now looking back I think this is an excellent record. It's a fascinating fusion album. Um, it's very eclectic as uh, Weather Report albums sometimes are. There is a strong reflection of the time this album was recorded, 1978, particularly because it includes all kind of uh, experimental elements of jazz funk and disco music and the sounds of the day so a lot of kind of synthesizer experimenting for example there's this track called river people uh, that is uh, written and produced by jaco pastorius and it's almost like a like a piece of music that he did all alone in the studio with all kind of synthesizers so there's basically no bass playing on it it's it's all done with keyboards and um uh, I really love this little little gem of a passage there where you can suddenly hear him through the microphone kind of emulating um, the sound of the cymbal or probably the hi-hat kind of doing this. It's, 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 it's pretty cute. And um, there is there are tracks like The Elders, which is again more like a atmospheric experimental track uh, that uh, has this beautiful percussive pattern played by Jaco on his bass, but it doesn't sound like a bass. I mean, I, it took me a while just to think about it, to figure out how this basic rhythm is created, but it's just him hitting uh, the muted strings of his bass guitar. Yeah, so uh, of course you get a lot of shredding here and on tracks like punk jazz. And um, obviously you have Wayne Shorter on saxophone, but the drummers are constantly changing on this album. So there are some tracks that are recorded with Tony Williams, other tracks are recorded with Steve Gadd, and some other tracks are recorded with uh, Peter Erskine. But um, the last track called And Then suddenly has this beautiful vocals. I mean, amazing. I was like wondering who is singing that? This sounds so great. So I looked it up and it's Maurice White from Earth, Wind and Fire. So uh, I was just thinking, yeah, all right, that explains that. Um, so brilliant record. Um, again, one of these slightly overlooked weather report uh, albums uh, that certainly deserve love and attention. 
and uh, that I've been listening to for quite a while in the last two weeks. So, uh, staying in the same genre, I've been listening a lot to Klaus Doldinger's band Passport, particularly their 1977 album Iguazu and uh, their 1978 album Ataraxia. And because I couldn't get enough of Passport, apparently, I also listened for a while to Earthborn, which came out in 1982. Now, um, I remember when I was becoming interested in music in the 80s, uh, I noticed that uh, there was always this tendency to set Passport up as this kind of a German answer to weather report, which they just aren't, honestly. And I don't mean it as a critique, but uh, I think the major difference between Weather Report and Passport lies in the fact that Weather Report was always very much interested in pushing the fusion envelope and uh, it could, could musically be much more challenging, while uh, Passport, um, Passport's music has always been, in a sense, one step away from well, from something like library music. And I don't mean it as a critique, because library music can obviously be wonderful. And it's no coincidence that a lot of members uh, of Passport were involved in companies and productions uh, dealing with library music. Um, but uh, it's something you would not say about Weather Report. And uh, so, uh, obviously, Passport, as a band and their albums, they stand much closer to... Uh, the concept of a kind of a musical wallpaper. So, in a sense, you could always make the argument that Passport's music is much more fitting as a background music while you are working on the computer. And uh, it's always pleasant. I really like their records. I mean, I didn't try to sound negative right now. I just never really bought into the idea that Passport is the German answer to Weather Report. They are just uh, their own thing. And uh, certainly closer to a kind of a mainstreamy idea of jazz rock than Weather Report. Um, interestingly, um, and that's probably one thing they have a bit in common with Weather Report, is that their music has always been quite kind of spongy, which means they reflect a lot what's going on around them. If you take Iguazu, it's still kind of in this uh, Latin jazz fusion paradigm, but one year later, on Ataraxia, you have tracks like Locomotive, which are definitely inspired by Giorgio Moroda and kind of reflect the the rise of disco music. Um, and this goes even further, three years later, on Earthborn, which obviously has all kind of elements of uh, 80s synth pop going on. Passport always had great bass players. I mean, the, the one big name, particularly on this album, is Wolfgang Schmidt. Um, later, well, from this album on, a year later, replaced by Dieter Peterreit. Now, the drummer most associated with uh, Passport is obviously Kurt Kress, who is probably like Germ one of Germany's most famous drummers. Interestingly, uh, uh, he was not on this album. Here he was replaced by Willy Ketzer. He probably had other projects going on. So, uh, yeah, I like those albums. Um, I guess... My favorite on Iguazu would be a track called Agua Marina. It's the second track on this album, but also the last track, Guna Guna. It's pretty good. Um, on uh, Ataraxia, uh, there's quite a lovely track called Sky Blue. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, those albums are always uh, very enjoyable from beginning to the end. Um, there are not really obnoxious songs on records like that. Um, yeah, but um, actually, uh, if you take Earthborn, there is a track called Basic, which uh, is an amazing example of uh, Dieter Peterite's bass playing. That's really incredible. And it's actually one of the moments where Passport hits this weather report mark, I would say. I mean, check out this track called Basic, just to hear uh, Dieter Peterite playing bass. It's quite cool. Uh, this is uh, Full Throttle Jazz Fusion, for me one of the best tracks on this album. 
So, uh, I've been talking a lot about Passport right now, right? Um, I bought this album here. This is one of the few examples that I bought just something completely on a whim. Um, this is a compilation of Billy Cobham. But the interesting thing about it is that this came out in the early 80s on the East German label Amiga as part of their Amiga Jazz series. And um, yeah, it only cost me a few bucks, so I thought, why not? Just a spur of the moment thing. So, um, Billy Cobham, released behind the Iron Curtain. Now back to the present. I've been listening to some great contemporary stuff in the last days. So, uh, first album that I want to show you was suggested by Jeff in his channel Liner Notes. And the band is called Vax Machine. And this album is called Earth Song of Silence. Now, when I call this a kind of a neo-hippie band, I'm not trying to be pejorative in any way. It is an extremely charming psychedelic rock, very tastefully recorded, very pleasant. The sound is quite lush and in parts almost ethereal. But on the other hand, there are some bona fide tough guitar solos going on and Overall, if I had to sum it up with one word, it would be simply charming. This is an extremely charming music and uh, quite enjoyable. Um, this came out on the label Beyond Beyond is Beyond Records, which is a North American label that I believe uh, also releases bands like uh, Leclerc. So, to some extent, this is kind of part of this uh, of this somewhat psychedelic, somewhat funky, somewhat jazzy uh, new sound that uh, fascinates me a lot these days. And uh, this is certainly a wonderful addition to my collection. Now um, <coughs> I have to cough before I talk about the next band because uh, it's a doozy. So if uh, the last 30 years, if someone would have asked me what I think is the most important uh, Australian band, I probably would have said Ice House. Um, I would have said that probably because I don't know that many Australian bands in the first place, but also because Ice House has always been this amazing institution of its own. But um, I probably would not say that anymore, because right now if someone would ask me what the coolest and the best band from Australia is, my answer would have to be Mild Life. This is their second album, Automatic, that came out just now. Um, it has already been shown by Big Star 1000, unsurprisingly, since uh, he lives in the same city where this album was released. But um, also because he was probably one of the first, well, I'm pretty sure he was the very first who uh, draw attention to this band two years ago when their first album, Phase, was released. Um, this is uh, not only a worthy continuation, it's maybe even better. I've listened to this album four times in the last two days and it is amazing. It's incredibly good. I mean, this is the kind of sound that I'm into these days. Brilliant musical atmosphere, a wonderful balance between um, analog music and electronic music. I already have two favorite songs for now. Um, they are both on the B-side. The one is called Citations, the other one is called Memory Palace. Now Memory Palace goes really heavily into kind of a jazzy fusion sound. Brilliant vocals. I'm totally into the bass playing of Thomas Shanahan. The bass player of the band. I mean, he has great bass sound, very dominant and very commanding without being in any way pretentious as a bass player. Yeah, it's a fantastic album, fantastic album. And for me, certainly a strong contender for the best album of this year, although the year is still not over. But um, yeah, this is uh, really a, an amazing album and I'm really not afraid to recommend this to everyone. So uh, check it out, Automatic by Mild Life. Yeah, now let's get to the USA and uh, check out this album, Harmony of Difference by Kamasi Washington. 
This is beautiful jazz. Uh, this came out with a nice little booklet, including a lot of interesting artwork, but also a bit of a description saying Harmony of Difference premiered as part of the Whitney Museum of American Art in 2017. Biennale alongside a film by A. G. Rojas and also featuring artwork by Kamasi Washington's sister Amani Washington, an original six-part suite that explores the philosophical possibilities of the musical technique known as counterpoint, which Washington defines as the art of balancing similarity and difference to create harmony between separate melodies. Now this kind of a description should not scare you off because after all you can just listen to listen to the album without thinking about counterpoints and uh, it's a wonderful atmospheric jazz as you would expect from Kamasi Washington very much shifting between extremely subtle and atmospheric parts and uh, very energetic moments kind of on the other side of the acoustic spectrum so beautiful beautiful record uh, Extremely tasteful and at the same time quite adventurous. If you like jazz music recorded by large outfits, this one is for you. Kamasi Washington, Harmony of Difference. Yeah, this one is a bit of a odd one and not particularly a record one would expect in my archive. But this is an album called So wie ich by Uschi Brüning. Now Uschi Brüning is a German jazz singer who came to prominence particularly in the 70s uh, and is a singer from uh, East Germany. So uh, she was really famous in East Germany and uh, so uh, there is a lot of history in approaching her music because she has this really strong fan base in East Germany. But this is a album she released in 2015. It came out on the German label Edel. This is what you would probably call kind of mainstream jazz or smooth jazz. There are four tracks here that are um, cover versions or rather typical uh, rearrangements of evergreens, particularly Round Midnight, Son of a Preacher Man and The Windmills of Your Mind. But I was mostly interested in all the other material, these new tracks written by mostly Ernst Ludwig Petrovsky and Andreas Bicking, who both are the sax saxophone players in her band. Um, and yeah, this is wonderful music. As I said, it's kind of a smooth jazz. It's kind of a middle of the road jazz uh, with German lyrics. Um, but uh, I really like her voice and it's a super charming music and uh, a lot of uh, melancholy behind it, obvious, and sentimentality. But that's what you expect from this sort of jazz music. The band sounds really great um, and the songs are quite wonderful. So um, this is certainly a nice uh, example of... Uh, German smooth jazz and uh, at the same time uh, a singer that has somewhat strong ties with uh, the German history. So uh, this is So wie ich by Uschi Brüning. And that's it for now. Um, I had some more records here but uh, honestly this is getting a bit out of hand. This video is far too long again. So uh, I want to wish you a nice day and uh, I hope there are some interesting suggestions uh, that you will maybe look up and give a listen and uh, keep it spinning. Have a nice day. Goodbye.